The chain of Homer is proved thus. After the chaos pulls asunder, a volatile spirit must forge it. Spiritus Mundi is its name. Frost, dew, snow, rain, and everything above are betrothed to it in faithful company. Here is contained the volatile seed of the world from the upper realms when it falls into the lower. From that it takes on a body when it grows visible before our eyes. After my morning meditation and exercise, mind and body are one. I often walk outside barefoot, allowing the dew to permeate through the soles of my feet. Feeling the energy of the earth pouring into my being, I reflect on alchemical texts and scriptures. Today's reading comes from the golden chain of Homer. Anton Joseph Kirschweger was one of those rare alchemists who understood the relationship to the physical and spiritual aspects of alchemy. Naturally, newer translations of this work are riddled with commentary from freighters of various orders, adding insight and reflection. It's in light of that tradition that I offer my own penny for your thoughts. Rock with it as we take that journey within. A newer translation adds a more modern layer to the text. After the chaos pulls it apart, a creature that flies must forge it. The spirit of the earth is its name. And yet, it's still not plain English, so let's oversimplify this a bit. Our collective soul is constantly manifesting in the physical plane, giving birth to all life that we see. We are all creature interconnected through the Creator. God is within all matter. Ergo, frost, dew, snow, rain, and everything above are married to the spirit of the earth in faithful company. Seemingly inert substances are imbibed with the same life force we all are. Think of the vibrating molecules that form the chains responsible for our own organs. That energy is cosmic and eternal. Our soul substance takes form for a time and acts as the glue that holds it all together. Upon death, those vibrations weaken, and the matter in which we are comprised returns to the earth. Our souls return to the cosmic source, and our bodies feed the earth in a never-ending cycle. Here is contained the seed of the creatures who fly from the upper realms when it falls into the lower, and again it takes on a body and glows visibly for the eyes to see. Nothing ever really dies. Energy is spirit, and spirit manifests in many forms. Remember that. As the alchemist of old would say, all influence of the mover or doer is according to the structure of the object to be moved, or the sufferer, who is a passive recipient. The alchemist deemed this the law of motion, but it could just as easily be seen in the way modern Rosicrucians think of it, the law of spirit. The famed spiritus mundi permeates all things. This volatile, constantly moving spirit is in a perpetual state of becoming. It changes in forms according to divine will. Our bodies, the physical world of Malkut, the invisible worlds beyond our senses are all in a state of constant motion governed by what all this came into being from. This is the beginning of wisdom. To grasp and understand that everything is interconnected is the start of all alchemical study. To truly transform one substance to another is to have a neo moment. There is no spoon. So how do we move beyond the senses? Some wish to control matter through polarity, seeing it as the gateway to creative power. The Genesis account definitely plays up how, polar how polarity keeps the universe in a sort of divine tension. Light divided from darkness, water above from water below, land from sea, day from night, elemental from elemental, male and female, conscious and subconscious, on and on it goes. However, I prefer keeping in line with the Egyptian Book of the Dead, so... I do not tamper with divine balance. But do you? It's your mystery, right? Anyways, an old school occultist by the name of Thomas Troward, who influenced the New Thought Movement and mystic Christianity in his day, offers us an alternative to forcing our will down the divine feminine's throat. One of the great axioms in the new order of ideas which I have spoken is that our thought possesses a creative power. And since the whole superstructure, existence of Malkut, depends on this foundation, it is well to examine it carefully. Now the starting point is to see that thought or mental action is the only possible source from which the existing creation could ever have come into manifestation at all. And it is on this account I have laid stress on the origin of the cosmos. It is therefore not necessary to go over this ground again. Every manifestation is an expression of divine thought. This divine thought has produced something which itself is capable of thinking. But the question is whether that thinking has the same creative quality as the parent mind. Hmm. Does it now? The New Age Manifestation kids certainly think so. And maybe someday I'll get into the schools of the Hebrew prophets 
and discuss the precursors of Kabbalah a bit. They add a sharp contrast that seems to indicate this parent mind of God blesses those who bless others and accept the ebb and flow of being rather than exerting their own will. But that would require its own episode to do justice. For now it is enough to recognize the golden chain of the Spiritus Mundi here in Malku. Man eats bread, wine, beer, fruit. From these he produces excrements which are carried back to the fields. Seed is sown upon them, and his food grows again from his own excrement. In the same way a tree, when winter robs it of its leaves, they fall down to the roots and turn into the sap that seeps into the roots and feeds and fertilizes its own parent tree. We are all but links in a chain comprised of the same elements of nature. This interconnectedness isn't merely a lofty ideal shared by mystics, but rather something tangible and real that you can verify with your own senses. To the alchemists of old knew the trappings of the intellect weren't so easily dismissed and found a way to sidestep them. They give their pupils ways they can verify deeper truths based on logic and observation before moving them into the unseen realms. To say the all is all is a vague description of the chaos that forms into the four elements, right? It takes years of study and meditation to note the interplay of the divine at work. Even then, those of us who do gain insight, and I mean understand how little we actually comprehend, are at a loss of words on how to share this wisdom. So what we're left with are collections of writings from mystics from the world over that share vision and perspective without encapsulating truth. The words become a link in the chain of understanding weaving through the mystery of life. And we share insights and growth through each exchange. Thus is the nature of our cycle in Malku. Why not just enjoy the journey? As always, keep breathing in life and living in love, 100.